right, welcome. Glad to have you guys back again with us for another video. It's been a while. We took last week off. A lot of traveling. A lot, a lot of, of traveling. traveling. Seminars. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's glad, glad to be back here. And the uh, topic of discussion today is uh, thyroid, mm -hmm. which actually, as we were chatting about before, um, is some of the, what, top five medications, uh, medications mm -hmm. that are prescribed for people are to help with, um, I don't want to say with the thyroid because it, they're generally it's for like what symptoms of right. something because your thyroid can get tested your thyroid can test um, po that is good mm -hmm. um, but really the truth of the matter is that there's other things that are going on that uh, that your thyroid is producing yep. that is uh, may not be active or just ineffective your thyroid may look like it's going strong but certain things are not flying so I'm just gonna turn it right over to you mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick and uh, tell us the truth behind the myth well, actually, the reason why we chose this topic is because we've actually had a lot of requests for this. But then all of a sudden, we started working on for our video today. And this whole week, it's been like thyroid problems galore. Yep. Okay? And there's some problems with just conventional medicine testing that they're doing. Uh, right now, basically, if you go in for a thyroid check, they'll actually go in, they'll look through all your symptoms, and they'll say, well, it looks like a thyroid issue. And they'll test your first level of your hormone called your TSH, mm -hmm. your thyroid stimulating hormone, which is just telling your brain, your pituitary, telling your thyroid to, hey, guess what? Produce some hormone. And if that value is not off, they say that your thyroid's fine, which is kind of ridiculous because it's much more. So what I want to do today is I want to go through all the tests. And uh, for example, we'll even put up on the video, we'll even put up ones we need to actually test for. So for example, we'll start with our TSH. So our brain telling our thyroid how to work. But then what happens is our thyroid will actually produce what's called T4, mm -hmm. okay? And that what happens, that is one form of our hormone that's produced. It'll also produce very little T3. Now, when you actually ask um, a patient if they've had their T3 levels checked, they don't really know what you're talking about. And they say, well, because they're, they're so conditioned about understanding T4, they know about that, but they don't know about T3. T3 is really our active form. Mm -hmm. It's really what does all of our biometabolism, really what is the thing that controls most and the effects that we see from the thyroid. Mm -hmm. You say, well, what can be some deficiencies? Well, we know that, first of all, energy production. Um, weight gain, you know, where they know that the uh, mood changes, we know skin and hair changes, we know temperature changes. So when they see those symptoms, a lot of times they'll measure TSH and T4, and if they're normal, they'll say there's nothing wrong with your thyroid. And what the, that really means is the fact that you may be producing enough T4, but the conversion of T3 isn't happening there. Right, so just kind of briefly explain the you could have tons of T4. Oh, a ton of it. Okay, and, but T4 is not active yep. or activated. Right until what? Until what happens is it's converted, okay? And once it leaves the thyroid, now our thyroid does produce some T3, mm -hmm. just very little amounts, okay? T4 is the major hormone, and then it, it gets activated in the cell, and usually the, the main mineral that actually controls that is selenium. So if you don't eat enough selenium-based foods, mm -hmm. what will happen is you can't convert that. Example of what? What are um, some selenium-based well, just even Just even your, your uh, uh, meat-based products. Okay. You know, have a lot of selenium, okay? All right. All right. Now, there's a couple confusions, though. So we have now the TSH, T4, let's say we get T3, okay? So a lot of times you see a T3 that's very low. Now, what also happens is there's, they found out not only the fact that those hormones are bound, I mean, they're bound to a red blood cell. They're, they're much metabolized, much slower. So now what you got to do is you got to ask the doctor, yes, now do T3, but also can you do a free T4 and a free T3 test? And that doesn't mean a free test. I know, I have patients <laughs> say all the time, like, I mean, doctors can do it for free? No. <laughs> no. Um, but what it does show is the fact that this is the hormone that's readily available. Okay. It's like, for example, it's produced, it's there. It doesn't have to be a bound from a cell. It mm -hmm. just can be used very quickly, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So now you got TSH, you have T4, you have T3. You have free T4 and free T3, okay? Now, here's the culprit. Let's say all those are normal. Do you know that you can still have a very bad thyroid symptoms? You say, how is that possible? Because there's one big one that they actually miss, okay? I actually pulled off of a bunch of, uh, um, actually, Synthroid website and Levothyroxin website. I pulled off some things that happen which can actually stop even the active form of your hormone working properly, okay? And the big thing is this. Is it's called reverse T3. Okay, which they never measure, only us in our office measure. You can ask and request it, but even if it's high, they wouldn't know what to do with it. What happens is, let's say that your thyroid produces T4, it gets changed to T3, but guess what happens? If reverse T3 is actually high, that will actually bind to a cell, and then the T3 can't work. Okay, so, and the number one thing that causes that is actually adrenal problems. Mm -hmm. So once again, stress yeah. can affect what? 
our thyroid. Right. Okay? Now, what does that mean? So let's look at this. Let's look at even some of the contraindications. That means if these are problems, you're not even supposed to take this drug. So I pulled this right off from their website, okay? And it's kind of interesting. It says contraindication. Bevothyroxin is contraindicated in patients with uncorrected adrenal insufficiency. Okay? It says that right here. That means, for example, if you do any thyroid testing, and let's say there is even an abnormal T4 or an abnormal T3, if you do not correct the adrenals first, you'll never correct that thyroid. Yeah. And so what they tell you, you will be on this medication for, for life. life. For life. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Right. Okay? So I actually want to read to you what reverse T3 is. Okay? Reverse T3, unlike T3, does not stimulate thyroid hormone receptors. Okay? So it does not stimulate it to be, get your active form. However, T3 receptors, reverse T3 receptors, nonetheless bind to these receptors, therefore blocking the action of T3. So let's say you have that active form. Well, the reverse T3 is already attached to the cell, so there's no activation of it. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, here's what happens. Well, how does that happen? Under stress conditions, how many people are stressed out right now? Ladies, here's oh. a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but here's the question. Right now, is, uh, it's October 30th. Don't forget to dress up tomorrow for Halloween. But it's, uh, it, right now, it's October 30th. What's gonna happen right now is there's gonna be a lot of mental stress, there's going to be a lot of sugar stress tomorrow, mm -hmm. okay? So what happens, the body goes under a very state of stress, and now our adrenal glands pump out a ton of cortisol, a okay. ton of hormone. Now, what it says is, under stressful conditions, the adrenal glands produce excessive amounts of cortisol, yep. okay? Cortisol binds the conversion of T4 to T3, thus shunting T4 conversion to T3 towards reverse T3. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Instead of producing your proper T3, you're, you're actually producing reverse T3. Now, guess what? No active hormone even know that you're even producing enough, stress can affect how that thyroid works. So it basically cancels it out. Shuts it right down. I mean, whatever your thyroid's doing, then your cortisol is coming in and... Yeah, exactly. So that's why we have to do it. That's why if you even look, even on their websites, even the contraindications for their <clears throat> drug is say, listen, we have to make sure the adrenals are done first. Right. Okay, you know why you never hear much about T3 and much about adrenals when it comes to actually any medical practice? is they created a drug for T3, and I, and I said I should have printed out the name for it and that, but what happens is they can't use it because it was so destructive to the human body, it actually make their heart shut down, actually the aorta almost explode. Mm. So unless you under great conditions, like in the hospital being monitored, that's the only way they can use it, mm -hmm. okay? Second of all, what are they gonna do for your adrenals? Nothing. Well, yeah. So therefore what happens is we're just gonna focus on that one area, try to give you a drug and say, listen, you gotta stay on levothyrox or synthroid the rest of your life. And the funny part is, a lot of people don't even get benefit from it, but they still stay on it. Right. right. So one last thing I want to show, because we did a, we, I got a great response from the soy video, okay? And here's the neat part. Right on levothyroxine's website, okay? It says, certain foods may decrease the absorption of this medication when taken at the same time. Taken levothyroxine separately from Soy, okay, soybean flour, soy infant formula. I know you start to laugh because I am, people are so myths about uh, soy as far as being a health food. They even say, if you're taking this, do not have soy products. Oh my goodness. How many physicians are looking at you going, hey listen, you're gonna take even the Synthroid or Levothyroxine I'm gonna give you, but you cannot have soy because soy downregulates the thyroid, mm -hmm. okay? It's very intense, it's very scary because, so now the fact that we, so now let's say you're taking levothyroxine and let's say you even get an energy benefit from it, mm -hmm. if you're eating soy products, you're even reducing the effect of your drug. Right, right, so it's all kind of just worthless. It, yes, so what you have to do, and like I said, you have to come in, you have to see what's going on with your thyroid, we have to get those adrenals back to normal first, get that reverse T3 down, come in, we can start rebuilding that thyroid, so there's no need for medication, there's no need for treatment, and watch all the symptoms that you have with thyroid problems go away. You know, the important thing that I'm, I mean, this is a ton of information to, to digest, so it's a good thing you're watching this on the computer because you can go back over and watch and over. it over and over and over again or email us with your questions at thewellnessway.info. But the important thing is that no matter who you are seeing as a physician, that you ask questions, tons of questions, mm -hmm. and don't just stop with, you know, here's a drug to take care of your symptom because, you know, as we heard, you have, uh, your, your thyroid is fine, and then after that, you uh, still have something wrong, so they'll give you something for the symptoms, but you never get to the root of the cause. So I uh, want to thank you again for watching, mm -hmm. and uh, for Dr. Patrick, I'm Jason Steger. Until next time, bless you.